Hey guys, it's Sneaky Turtle. Welcome back to another Kerbal Space Program video. Sorry it's taken so long to get another video out, but uh, we're back with another video. Uh, in this video, I'm building the DC-3 Space Shuttle concept, which I basically just stumbled upon. Uh, and I thought it was a really cool concept. Um, the whole idea of it I thought was really cool for a fully reusable shuttle. So we're going to start out in the space plane hangar where we build the vehicle. Um, at first, I built the vehicle very incorrectly. Uh, there's many different pictures on um, the DC-3, like what it looked like. And the first design I saw didn't look right, so I ended up looking back, and it ended up not being right. So you see me in a few seconds adding orange tanks to the side of the rocket, and I ended up removing those later because they weren't actually right. The, the DC-3 space shuttle, I think that's what it was called, um, had a airplane on the bottom with rocket engines that would get to like 20,000 kilometers, and then it had a uh, shuttle on the top, which would go to orbit, and could deliver payloads to orbit and build the International Space Station and stuff like that. Um, but the International Space Station wasn't even a thing at that time, so... Yeah, now you can see I'm putting the orange tanks on that. I did remove those later because they weren't accurate to the actual vehicle design. Um, so... Connecting the fuel lines, but that doesn't really do anything. And you can see that I've added aerospike engines to the side on the wings. I ended up changing those out for uh, jet engines, uh, just because I thought the jet engines would be better because we already had too much thrust. And since it was kind of an early design concept, I thought that I could take a few kind of creative liberties and do what I kind of wanted with it. So, um, I'm putting a vehicle in the payload bay because I thought this was the shuttle at first but then I ended up being wrong so we ended up crossfading here where I actually uh, did it right in just a few seconds unfortunately the footage of me building the rest of the vehicle got corrupted so I do apologize for that but you'll be able to see it here in a second so here's the new vehicle I think it looks really awesome I really like the DC-3 I think it's a cool design eight vector engines firing up and the vehicle is relatively stable for how it is. And we can just kind of slowly bring the vehicle up. And then we can do a rollover. Or, yeah, roll program to get the vehicle into the correct orientation a little bit here. So, doing the roll program now. It's in the correct orientation. It's a little bit unstable at lower speeds. Once it reads a high speed, then the... Uh, Wings help keep it stable and it works fine, but when it's at a low speed, it doesn't. So attaching the uh, upper stage of the vehicle and flying it into orbit, and then you can see the airplane in the top left coming in for a landing, firing up those jet engines on afterburner mode because they barely provide enough thrust. We are almost in orbit now with the shuttle and the... Uh, we ended up running out of fuel in the shuttle, so we had to transfer a little bit of fuel from the lunar module. Which is weird, because I've done this a few times, and I still had like 200 meters a second to spare. But it was very strange that how that happened. And then we have, we have back to... The orbital encounter where I just got the lunar module out and it can go to the to the mun. We ended up having a little bit of emergency here soon, but that is fine because it all worked out, maybe. So we get our trajectory to the moon and then make sure the uh, orbital inclination is aligned properly. And then I just finish that burn really quickly. Um, and then we can go to the moon. Or the mun, technically. So now we're going in for a landing burn. I just increase the brightness so that it's, or decrease the brightness so that it's visible. And then doing a burn here, it was like a perfect burn. It slowed down just at last second. And then landed the vehicle in just a second here. And touchdown. Now you can get the Kerbal out and plant the flag on the MUN. Just a quick NASA flag. I should have changed it to the American flag, but it's the NASA flag, so. Planting the NASA flag on the one, and then 
Uh, we can just quickly get back in the in the lunar craft because the lunar craft is not the main part of the mission, and then we can go back to the uh, DC three. So the original plan was to dock the DC to this this plane and the DC three back together. But before we got into orbit, we ran out of fuel. So you can actually see me using the monopropellant thrusters to get us back to Kerbin, and I had had just enough monopropellant fuel to get us to deorbit into Kerbin's atmosphere. So, I wouldn't be able to redock with a DC-3, but the Kerbal would be fine. Um, a few things blew up, but it just doesn't really matter. The vehicle's gonna get destroyed anyways, as long as the Kerbal survives. Which the Kerbal easily survived, and then he can bail out with his parachute, and just go in for a nice, smooth little landing. Now we can crossfade back to the DC-3 space shuttle, and bring that thing in for a landing. Unfortunately, I wasn't able to land at the KSC. I, I don't know what I was doing, but I kind of messed up landing at the KSC. I deorbited way too early, but uh, we're gonna land on land anyways. So it all works out, and the vehicle's able to hold a really cool-looking reentry path, kind of like the space shuttle, the actual space shuttle was. Now we can get it to land. This vehicle flies really well. I was really happy that both vehicles flew exceptionally well. Bringing it in for a landing and getting ready for touchdown. And we're going to have a little bit of a bumpy landing. But anyways, that brings us to the end of the video. Make sure you guys like and subscribe. I'll see you in the next video. Bye for now.